Happy first day of Advent. If I haven't had a chance to meet you, my name is uh, Kurt, I'm one of the pastors here. And um, I, I wanted to tell you a little thing that's really important to me. Uh, when it comes to Advent, when it comes to Christmas and celebration, I, I'm one of those weird people who has to keep the season very holy. What do I mean by this? Well. Some of you know I'm an American uh, by birth, and we, as you know, living here in Canada, we get to do Thanksgiving twice now, which is a lot of turkey in a season. I'm still tired from the first one, and we had a little more turkey on Thursday, if you knew that that was American Thanksgiving. And, and in our family, and this all started when I got married, Lauren made it very clear, Christmas only starts the day after Thanksgiving. Right? And so the Friday after Thanksgiving, sometimes it's called like Black Friday or whatever, right? That's when we can start decorating. That's when we can start having Christmas music on. But anything before that in the calendar year and anything after January 1-ish, out of bounds in every way, shape, and form. And what we've noticed is there's this trend to kind of just push, you know, it's October. Let's celebrate Christmas. What? It's bonkers. Some people are like, hey, it's September. I need a little jolly in my life, so Christmas. And I'm just like, uh, I don't know. It's actually an ongoing debate on our staff team. There are certain individuals who I won't name called Jody who really <laughs> believe that it's always Christmas and it's always magic. <laughs> but that's not keeping it holy. You know, we keep it holy by saying there is a block of time within which we go all out for Christmas and baby Jesus and all the stuff. And then we're Grinch the rest of the year. And it has to be this way, people. Now, you may not agree with me, but, but what, what it kind of brings to mind, it, it, we're having this sort of conversation during Advent called in the waiting. And, and waiting for the Christmas season is such and a joy because all of a sudden you go from normal to not, right? Normal to not. And whatever that rhythm looks like for you, there's something important about waiting. In Christianity, we, we have this sort of rhythm of waiting built in. In fact, if you look at the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible, you, you have multiple periods where people had to wait for God to act. That God was going to do something, but there's this prolonged sense of ache, this deep hope that something is going to get better, but it's going to require a pause, a wait. And what I want to do today is I want to read a passage from Isaiah and, and I want us to just notice this longing. You know, Advent is really a season where you and I are invited to join ancient Israel in this rhythm of waiting. Now, we have more of the story, but we, we also know the importance of identifying in the ache of longing for God to do something. And so Isaiah really is this prophet who is anticipating the Babylonian exile that's going to be coming and, and is really trying to, in many ways, channel the sense that God isn't going to give up even in people's unfaithfulness. And so Isaiah records this encounter with God that he has. And this is what it says in Isaiah chapter 2. It says, this is what Isaiah, Amoz's son, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest of the mountains. It will be lifted above the hills. People, peoples will stream to it. Many nations will go and say, come, let's go up to the Lord's mountain, to the house of Jacob's God, so that he 
may teach us his ways and we may walk in God's paths. So I'm gonna stop here for a moment. So, so this is a, a big sort of cosmic picture where Isaiah sees a day where people from throughout the world will be seeking the God of Israel. And they'll do this because they want to. They'll do this because they see something bright and beautiful in Israel that is so compelling that to do anything else but to pursue what's happening in God's people would be folly. And so the prophet says, light is here as we follow God's path. And eventually people are going to want to follow that path with us. And the passage continues and says, instruction will come from Zion, which is another word for like Jerusalem, Israel. The Lord's word from Jerusalem. God will judge between the nations and settle disputes of mighty nations. Then they will beat their swords into iron plows and their spears into pruning tools. Nation will, know, will not take up sword against nation. They will no longer learn how to make war. Come house of Jacob, let's walk by the Lord's light. So for, for ancient Israel, in the midst of darkness, in the midst of pain, in the midst of the struggles to really navigate a world that is broken, the prophet says, a day will come when a new kind of world will be born in the midst of this one. And the light of God will be the thing that shines and draws people to it. And, and, and what's pa fascinating is like, here's all this future stuff. So because of the future, verse five, and I wanna put that back in bold on the screen here. Verse five says, come house of Jacob, let's walk by the Lord's light. The prophet's like, look, the future is heading this way. There is a day that will come when the nations will want what we have. So to anticipate that reality, live as though that is fully yours here and now. And yes, God's gonna do something in the future. Isaiah will talk about a coming king, a righteous one, a Messiah. But if we want to truly trust God and believe that this is God's will for reality, when we talk about pruning shears being cut and all of that beautiful futuristic stuff, Live in the reality right now. You are shining. You can be light. The New Testament picks up a similar theme. This is going to be from Romans chapter 13. This is what Paul wrote to the church at Rome. Paul is this traveling preacher who helped start churches and oversee churches in the first century. And in Rome, he tells them this. The commandments, don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't steal, don't desire what others have, and any other commandments are all summed up in one word. You must love your neighbor as yourself. So anything that the law, anything that God has taught is summed up in one command, you must love your neighbor as yourself. This is fascinating. And it goes even further. It says, love doesn't do anything wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is what fulfills the law, the teachings of the Old Testament. As you do all this, you know what time it is. Can we pause here for a minute? You know what time it is. Time matters. There's a time to celebrate Christmas and I've already declared what it is, so get on board, right? There is a time to not and be a Grinch. That's the rest of the year. But knowing what time it is, when we read the Bible, 
And when we just look at our lives, this matters so much. When we read the Bible, understanding that Israel was in a particular place in time, trying to wrestle with what hope actualized would look like in the future. And of course, we know that that hope ultimately looks like Jesus of Nazareth being born to a peasant family, raised in glory and resurrection. I mean, this is the story and, and now Paul is saying, look, you need to know what time it is because as the ancient people of God anticipated a Messiah in their future and the renewing of creation in their future, those of us who live in light of that Messiah today, we have a different sort of slant on the story. It's a different time. The time says Jesus will come back a second time. So you and I are waiting for a second advent, a second arrival of Jesus. And yet we still have the same ultimate hope as well, that the world will be healed. And this is what God will do through Jesus. And so understanding the time matters. And it'll keep on going here in the passage. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your sleep. Now our salvation is nearer than when we first had faith. The night is almost over and the day is near. So let's get rid of the actions that belong to darkness and put on the weapons of light. Let's behave appropriately as people who live in the day, not in partying and getting drunk, not in sleeping around and in obscene behavior, not in fighting and obsession. Instead, dress yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and don't plan to indulge your selfish desires. So again, like the prophet Isaiah, it's we know where the story is going, live as though that story starts now. What time is it now? The big passage here that I'll throw up in bold really quick here. So let's get rid of the actions that belong to the darkness and put on the weapons of light. Light does something in darkness. It glows, it radiates, it provides heat. It changes the atmosphere completely. And this week was really kind of fun because I was working on this talk and my daughter had word, dressed like a word day at her school. And guess what word she chose? This is a word she's really been excited about. Lydia just loves this word. I'll throw it on the screen here. It's the word luminous, luminous. She dressed like luminous, yes. She is very luminous, full of or shedding light, bright and shining, especially in the dark. I love that last little, especially in the dark, because that's what's so incredible about being a follower of Jesus. You and I are invited to be luminous. The world is hard. Life is hard. We're holding things that hurt right now. I can imagine if you're not immediately hurting in some way, shape, or form, you are connected to someone who is. Because the world hurts at times. But how can we not look at a picture of a girl like this and have a little joy in our life? How can we not be people who say, yeah, it it is hard and all the more reason to be people of the light, to be people who illuminate hope where it seems impossible. This is the invitation of Advent. We recognize that the time is here to be light and a time will come where the whole creation itself will be light. And so as we anticipate what God wants for this world, as we anticipate with Israel, the desire for a Messiah, we get to make a choice. 
Will we be luminous? Will we be the people who step into hard things with Jesus and bring light? It's that simple. And so one thought for today. Be luminous while you wait. In the waiting, in the pockets of life where things are hard, often we fill that space with prayer. Have you been praying and seeking God for something and it doesn't quite seem to be working out? Have you been so disappointed in God at times that you're like, I don't even want to pray because it's not like it ever fixes things anyway. You see those struggles in the Bible. And yet, the invitation, no matter our circumstance, no matter the pain we're holding, no matter the junk we have in our hearts and in our lives, you can be part of the the solution. Your stuff may not all get fixed right away, but even in the hard things, you can light up this world with hope and not superficial hope, not the kind of hope that says, hey, everything's fine because Jesus, but rather the kind of hope that says, I know that no matter what happens in my life, that God's light will not be extinguished. And so I'm going to trust while I wait that being light in this world is what I was made for. May we be luminous while we wait. May we be committed to being a people that when others around us see us, they say there is something different here. In the waiting, can we become people who truly trust? Like ancient Israel had to trust that years and years and years would go by with nothing being sorted. But then one day, a baby would be born in the corner of the Roman Empire that would transform everything. Let's pray. So Jesus, we invite your light, your love, your goodness to illuminate our path this week. Where we are hurting, would your light give us courage to take the next step forward. Where others are hurting, would they see in us something that draws them towards, not us in and of ourselves, but the God who is in and working through us. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the light who has come. And thank you, Jesus, that as we wait for you, you are always here at the same time. Pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.